guys, Dino here. I thought I'd do a brew day video. I haven't done one for a while and um, it's been, well it must be six to eight weeks since I did an all grain brew. So uh, I've got the day off work and uh, it was raining outside so I thought I would uh, get up nice and early this morning. So I got up at 7.30 and started heating up the, uh, the mash water. Um, so yes, it's a smash beer with uh, Simcoe all the way through. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably scroll some of the information up the side here as I'm talking. Um, used a pale malt base and once again I set aside some, some of the grain and toasted that up. Uh, toasted that up. Um, last time I did 200 grams and this time I decided to up that to 300 grams just to see how that will change the character of the beer. Um, yeah, so just pale, pale malt base, uh, Simcoe hops, and I'll put a tiny amount of carapils in there, like 100 grams. Um, yeah, it's, it's essentially a smash apart from the 100 grams of carapils, but that will hopefully aid with the head, head retention, um, given that it's a smash beer. Um, yeah, so that's about it. I'll uh, stop talking. Um, I'll show you sort of um, the toasting of the malts that I did yesterday and then the brew day footage today. So uh, yeah, enjoy that guys and we will catch up with you in the next video. Cheers. It's the day before brew day and I'm just um, going to toast some of the base malt. So it's going to be a smash beer. Um, I've got three kilos of base malt and I'm going to toast uh, 300 grams. So I'm just weighing that out now. Okay, so I've just taken the toasted malt out of the oven. So as you can see it's um, gone a nice um, light brown colour. Um, so that was 15 minutes at 180 degrees. It smells really good. Nice sort of toasted, um, like toasted muesli I guess smell coming off the top. So once that's cooled down I'll pop that into a brown paper bag and that'll go into, my, into tomorrow's brew. Cheers guys. So the strike water is just coming up to temperature at the moment, so it's almost there ready for the grains to be put in. Over here I've got my grains, um, I've got my 3 kilos of uh, pale um, malt, a little bit of carapils and I um, toasted up 300 grams of the pale mold as well to go in so yep I'll be putting that in shortly okay so I'm just doing the mash at the moment I'm just coming up to 60 minutes um, it's holding the temperature really well um, it's lost probably only half a degree at the moment um, this this insulation jacket I made, I know it looks pretty um, budget, but it works really well. It's just a foil lined uh, sun sunshade for your car. Um, it was like three or four bucks from the warehouse, so yep, um, just fashioned into this cover with the foil um, on the inside. And uh, yeah, works a treat, so we will come back once uh, I've got the boil underway. Cheers. Okay, so the mash is finished and I've just lifted the grains out of the pot and I'm just um, sparging with three litres of water. So I'll carry on doing that. Um, while I'm sparging I'm also bringing up the, uh, the pot to the boil at the same time. So we will come back uh, once this is done. Cheers guys. Okay, so got the liquid up to the boil, so I'm just going to do my first hop addition. So this is uh, 10 grams of Simcoe, so we'll plant that in. Whoa, whoa. Jeez, I thought it was going to boil over straight away. The joys of filming with one hand and holding something in the other. like it's under control. Okay, we'll come back when we do the next editions. 
Okay, I've got my work chiller in um, sterilizing. So I'm putting in a quarter um, tablet of Wurflop and also my 10 minute edition of, uh, of the Simcoe. So I've got to mention this is a 30 minute boil and I'm doing additions at 30, 10, 5 and 0 of Simcoe um, for a total of I think it's 50 grams um, in, a, in a 9 and a half litre batch. So yeah, so all looking good so we'll uh, carry on with the next step shortly. Yeah. Cheers guys. Okay guys, that's the uh, brew day finish. Sorry I uh, skipped a couple of the steps on camera, just the final hop additions and also just cooling down the wort. Um, don't think anybody really needs to see that. Um, so yeah, I've ended up with uh, just under 10 litres, which is good. Um, did a hydrometer sample. Um, after correcting for temperature, it came out at 1046. And um, yeah, it's looking a lovely colour. I've just had a taste of it. It tastes really nice. Some nice bitterness coming through. And I'm glad I used the old Wurflock um, tablet because, as you can see, it's already uh, settling out uh, a lot of the hot matter. So I'll definitely make a conscious effort to uh, do that in future. I usually forget to uh, to buy any, so glad I've done that. So yeah, that's uh, that's me done, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll keep you posted on how things go. Cheers. Hey guys, back again. I just thought I'd quickly mention one other thing which um, some of you guys might find useful. Uh, Luke uh, Watkins mentioned this um, tip or idea. Um, what I've done is I have tilted up the front of the fermenter um, with a small block of wood. Now the idea of that is that the all the hot matter and the, the yeast cake etc will all settle uh, hopefully away from the away from the tap um, on an angle so it'll be, more of it will gather at the back and also I guess the other added benefit is it gives a bit more space between the uh, top of the liquid and the airlock so hopefully that will uh, reduce the chance of any uh, um, bubbling over or whatever so yeah sorry just thought I'd mention that quickly I'm definitely done now guys cheers for watching yeah. Oh,